So what's going on today, Maureen? Out of the 40 plus squash plants that were planted in here, there is one very unique squash. And it's the carnival squash. I've never grown them before, so this was my first year. And out of all the squashes that I've ever grown, which has only been for the last three years, this one has been one of the most prolific squashes I've ever grown. The greenery is still very green right now compared to any of my other squash plants that are dying off right now or have the powdery mildew on them. So I'm sure many of you are saying, well, what the heck is a carnival squash? It's a, a hybrid cross between a sweet dumpling and an acorn squash. So let me show you what it is. Actually, first let me show you what it isn't due to the cross-pollination. Right here I have two carnival squash plants and they are producing very different fruit. Then over here from these plants, there again, they look different. But if we look down in here, I think this is closer to what we want to see for a carnival squash. Let me just try to find a right one. So I thought, let's have a closer upper look at everything. I did have a couple of acorn squashes that were good and right, but this also is an acorn squash. I'm pretty sure it's been cross-pollinated with a zucchini, looking at the skin of it. This is what I believe that a carnival squash should look like. The more that the green goes away, that is an indication that it's ripe. Also, you want to hear more of a hollow sound. But the first one that we were looking at, you see it's very much shaped like an acorn, but it's got the coloring of the carnival squash, which is just really, really fascinating. This, I believe, more of a traditional carnival squash. And then this crazy one, which looks like a pumpkin. Just like many of the other squashes, you pick them and then you let them cure for about two weeks, you know, to make them more shelf stable. And I, But I'm sure you're all going, but I want to know what those look like inside more. So we're going to go do that. Welcome to my farmhouse kitchen. Let's cut some of these open. The ones that I chose are the one that's long, the pumpkin, and the one that could be typical. This weekend is Canadian Thanksgiving, and so I have some of my sugar pie pumpkins, and I am going to roast them up at the same time. Kill two birds with one stone for making pumpkin pie. But let's get into these. These are the ones that didn't make the cut. So this first one I am gonna cut on a, a lengthwise I think. Oh. Smells very good. So I'm not gonna save any of the seeds from these ones. They're just going to go out to my ladies. Lots of beautiful seeds. So here is our next one. He's got some lovely orange on him. Let's see what he looks like inside. A little bit lighter in color. This one, it's very, very cool. It's got this, you know, kind of neat green pattern on the top, and this one on the bottom. It's, it's so perfect in how it looks. What are you gonna be like? It, be, it will be very interesting to see if there's any difference in their tastes. This one is tough. Let's flip it over and see if I can get it going that way. Ah, much easier. like inside. Now I'll do some of my sugar pumpkins. I think, I think I might have got about 30 of these. I'm just going to cut the tops off and scoop them out. grown sugar pie pumpkins before and I found that our just our regular pumpkins they weren't very sweet last year we have cooked up one of these 
we found that it was much, much sweeter and really, really smooth. So I'm really looking forward to making a pie with this. Oh yeah, that's very much smells like pumpkins. So we have some great seeds for my ladies. So when I was researching about carnival squashes, the reason for them making the, the hybrid, the sweet dumpling is not that sweet. So they crossed it with the acorn and it's supposed to be just absolutely fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to trying these out. Another thing I think I really like about having the sugar pie pumpkin is that it's only one little pumpkin where last year when I had my Big Max pumpkin, it weighed 63 pounds. And so we had to process the whole 63 pounds all at once. Made some pies for Thanksgiving, also canned it up as just as a squash to use it for squash soup, and then pureed some and froze it so that we could make pumpkin sage ravioli. So there we've got our little pumpkin. Another thing that my son-in-law said was, you know, to make these our soup bowls. So take the innards, roast it up, and then use these as our serving bowls, which is really, really cute. I think that'll be fun for a family dinner. So we're just gonna do some stabbing inside of them. Everybody to fit. Awesome. So I am going to put butter. Not that one. That's a butter for the dog. And oh, you're small. So I'm going to put one in our itty bitty sugar pumpkin. My daughter loves cinnamon with her squash, so I'm going to do a few of them with some cinnamon in it so that we can get a taste of what does it taste like with cinnamon and without. So you're done. You're done. A little bit more cinnamon. And in the other squashes, we'll put some salt and pepper. There are our squashes all ready to go into the oven. I'll put them into the oven and we'll bake them. I didn't say how much I'd bake them for, or what temperature, because uh, I didn't look that up. So uh, right now I've got them at 350 for uh, maybe an hour and I'll check them, but I'll go and Google that and see if I need to turn it up. So do your own homework when you're doing your own squash. I have about four cups of seeds. I don't know if I want to really give those to the chicken. So I think we might just roast these because pumpkin and squash seeds are so nummy. Next will be our taste test. We've got our squash all done. Oh, look at that. It's lovely. The pumpkins are all nice and done. It's the first carnival that I'm going to try. Oh, wow. And it's super creamy. So this is the oblong one. So I'll try a little bit of it. similar flavor and then I'm also going to try my little mini pumpkin one see what that tastes like I'm not trying any of the ones that have the cinnamon I'm gonna leave that one for my adult mm. 
again, the sugar pumpkin one, super, super creamy. Really awesome. So here are the squashes all nice and cooked up. Looking really wonderful. Just going in their, their butter. Looking lovely. A few seeds of the pumpkins. So I really find that the carnival squash is very, very tasty, very delish, and worth growing. And because you do get a lot of little squashes, I still have more to pick in my urban farm. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day wherever you are, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care, and God bless.